Chelsea, welcome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for making some time for us uh, on the short term. Mm -hmm. um, you are you just have read a book uh, uh, about uh, uh, what wrote a book. Uh, it's a shareable life, mm -hmm. and it uh, was about a, a, a two month uh, a, a twelve months research you did. Yeah. So what, what you do? I mean, basically, it started out with three of us experimenting with the sharing economy and realizing how it was transforming our lives and making things easier and more flexible and more fun and way more connective to other people. So we decided we should write a book and tell other people about how all this stuff works, um, specifically people that are maybe outside of urban areas or outside of you know the, the nexus of where this is kind of happening, which is at least in the United States, started in San Francisco and a few other major cities. So um, we decided to write a practical guide, which we titled, It's a Shareable Life. Right, so. cool. and, 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 and what kind of experience uh, in practice did you have with the sharing economy before you came up with the idea? Yeah, so I started out um, co-working in open office environments and kind of helping out with a space in Santa Cruz called Next Space. And then I couch surfed actually um, quite a bit <laughs> in all different places in the world. I hosted and was a guest um, and had extremely connective experiences with people from all around the world. And then um, when I returned, I started renting out my car and lending my car to people and having people crash on my couch and, you know, renting my place while I was away and things like that. And time banking, um, you know, basically testing the limits of everything that's in the sharing economy. Yeah, so but when you started with it, uh, it, it, it wasn't called the sharing economy yet. So now it's, 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 it's quite going fast. I think the first article that I saw was um, Fast Company, and at the time they were calling it the sharing economy, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a term that people commonly used every single day in the press, so mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, but as we were sort of discovering all of these things and drawing connections, um, it was kind of natural to be like, okay, what is this called? Like, this is, this is a, you know, a convergence, so. Um, the sharing economy it was, and it's the term that I've kind of stuck to the entire time. So. And 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 uh, is there also a difference between uh, uh, the 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 moment that you started with the research and where you ended? It, 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 did it also change it's your changed view? Changed so much. Um, has it changed my view? Yes and no. I've always seen the sharing economy as a movement, not as like a set of businesses. Um, so I see it as like everything from organizations to, you know, grassroots organizations and companies to how people think and how people act and um, how they view their possessions and um, how they share information online and things like that. So um, I guess the question was, has, has my view of it changed over time? Not really. Has the, the sharing economy itself changed over time? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's lots of companies, there's lots of capital influx, um, there, <laughs> there's policy issues and there are um, sort of a lot of arguments about regulation and what's going on next and like, is this really sharing and things like that. Yeah. And I think those are all great questions, but they sort of point to, okay, like this is um, becoming an overlay on the traditional economy and is that really what we want or do we want something completely different mm -hmm. and if we want something different what does that look like and I think that's kind of where we're sitting right now and do you got an idea about where it has to go to and yeah I mean I think there's a lot of answers that are really great I mean um, again there's things converging we've got cryptocurrency and we've got peer-to-peer -peer, you know possibly open source networks and then we have um, cooperatives, the emergence of cooperatives as a business model. I know they're really popular in Europe, but they really haven't taken hold here. And if you take a sharing economy business model and you attach it to a cooperative, I think that that's a really beautiful, amazing possibility mm. for how we can share ownership. Yeah. And, and, and the research, uh, it was 12 months. So what are you doing in those 12 months? <laughs> the research was longer than 12 months. The book took <clears throat> two and a half years to get done. Uh -huh. um, but I guess, yeah, the research period was definitely like maybe nine months actually of it. Um, full time I, or hmm? full time research? No, it was part time in between things, maybe like half time at some points. Mm -hmm. Um, it just included, you know, talking to the founders of the companies that were um, coming across this stuff and asking to speak to their users and, I, like I said, experimenting with, with it myself. Um, 
you know, talking to leaders, hanging out with people, and then also creating community around the sharing economy as it was emerging. So bringing all of the companies together and um, the people that were a part of them. And, and how did you bring everybody together? So I started an event series, an educational and social event series called the Sharers of SF, which mm. is um, it's on a meetup group. It's just like it's a simple group, but basically we started with things called collaborative happy hours where we got people together that were into the sharing economy to you know, have a beer and hang out and talk about what they were doing and potentially collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it sort of evolved um, to also include something called the Sharers Talks, which are um, educational talks which include panelists um, discussing these matters um, like value and what are the values of the sharing economy and what is the sharing economy and, and how, how can it and will it evolve? I, those are the questions that I've been asking recently. And the next, um, the next talk is about um, redefining value, looking at different types of um, Currency point systems, the idea of you know social interaction as a currency and things like yeah. that. Yeah, because the values questions I think are really, really hot right now because now the value of, of, of the economy is more about the, the money part. But I think the, the, the biggest value of of the sharing economy isn't only about money or, or, mm. or uh, definitely not. Uh, how do you s uh, uh, because because you, you're really a, a sharing economy uh, ambassador? It's, it's, it's you, you, you live sharing economy. Uh huh. <clears throat> and what way do you look at all the discussions about the valuations, the investors, uh, the, the, the growing, but also uh, uh, not everybody um, be, uh, 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 being in the right position like if Uber, uh, we just took, uh, arrived here with an Uber cap and we asked the guy, okay, are, are you happy with Uber? He wasn't really happy with Uber. Mm. Uh, and when we hear the story, <laughs> we uh, do understand why he isn't happy. So how do you look uh, to that uh, development? So, a couple of things. First of all, I feel like Uber was never actually part of the sharing economy. They just kind of decided to, you know, ride along with the press and allow that to happen without saying, you know, we're not necessarily part of this. Um, yeah, I mean, replicating a taxi service digitally, you know, all over the world to me is not the sharing economy. I, I like Lyft because, and Sidecar because they have um, shareable rides, which allow you know multiple passengers to kind of get in along the way. So I mean, if people aren't driving to one location and picking up someone on you know a convenient path, I don't really think that's sharing. <laughs> I mean, you're sharing your car and you're sharing the expense of your car and things like that, and I think it's really great for people to have that flexibility. But I think it's also important to delineate between sort of like this on-demand economy and the sharing economy. And Uber, I'm not impressed by you know their moral standards and what they've been doing. Yeah, I mean, what? I will say that, like, <laughs> that if was. you can call them standards <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 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 um, what were uh, uh, during the research and also by writing the book, uh, what were the in what were some interviews that really surprised you? Hmm. I think. You know, just interviewing people about their experiences with the sharing economy, I realized that my experiences weren't really that unique. That people, you know, what they got out of it was so much deeper than, you know, just renting out their car. Like, one guy told me about um, people that rented out his car leaving him gifts in his car. <laughs> like little chocolates and things <laughs> like that, or like um, a six pack of um, ginger ale or something. And he was really touched by that, you know. So I mean I think I think that uh, the income possibilities and and also sort of just the random little things that happen in human interaction are really great. But you know another thing that was wonderful was to learn you know a few years ago about a company that's really successful today, basically um, financing their company by utilizing Airbnb, um, you know, to be able to afford New York City. Mm -hmm. So there are a few things that were really great. And 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 were there, were there also things, uh, some things where you uh, where you had really high expectations, but where you was really dis disappointed at, at, at the end of the of the of the interview? Where I was disappointed, um, hmm. or, or or that the, the thing uh, when you started, you were really thought something else uh, of the 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 the, 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 the uh, organization or, or the person mm. than in the end. <clears throat> That's an interesting question. So. Um, one of the companies that I originally interviewed and talked to was TaskRabbit, and their business model has changed quite a bit over time. Um, they've had to lay off a bunch of people, and they kind of moved from a um, project-based um, thing where they actually had um, 
a percentage of, well, let me rephrase. They basically, are you familiar with TaskRabbit? Yeah. So basically they had, you could anybody could put a project up for anything and then the TaskRabbits could actually bid on it. And they've since changed kind of more to an hourly model and it's kind of changing over into like a cleaning, handyman sort of like company versus um, being a little bit more open. And I think that that's changed for the TaskRabbits tremendously. And there's there's a few other, other ways to do that. I think there's a company called Localnomics that's a cooperative actually that's mm -hmm. following that model. And there's also time banking, which I'm really excited about. So yeah. I'm not saying TaskRabbit's bad. I'm just saying it's different. You know, it's changed yeah. since it originally yeah. started. And it's also a, 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 because people are going to work uh, with Uber, with TaskRabbit, with lots of platforms, they're going to work uh, by using online platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the power, uh, also when it's not, not a cooperative, uh, is at the platform. So, so there's nothing collaborative about that. Right. Not, not, not much. And <coughs> Uh, but also the rights of the of the laborers. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is it also a, a discussion over here in the U.S.? Wait, can you rephrase the question? With the the the, uh, the rights that you have as a Uber driver or as a Tesla uh, 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 person um, when you use the platform to uh, to do things to earn money. Uh, but uh, like what kind of rights? Like with the minimum wage, like the uh, some social uh, oh, services. Oh yeah. <laughs> Getting back to sort of like, like that on-demand economy question of, um, yeah, I mean, we've moved away from unions in many in many ways where people have um, protections on their wages and things like that, and we're increasingly moving into a gig economy where you know people are in the U.S. 10.99 and given independent contractor positions and maybe they have like three or four of those to um, piece together an income. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you have these sharing economy companies, they're still getting 1099, but they don't have, you know, protections or minimums on their wages and things like that. Um, I do think it's somewhat up to the people that are earning the money to decide whether or not, you know, that that's worth it for them. Because some of the time, you know, people wouldn't have access to work at certain hours or at certain times of their lives. So I think that it, the sharing economy provides an alternative to that. For example, stay at home moms or, you know, somebody that's like ill or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But having said all that, I would say that a cooperative would be a far superior model where, you know, everybody gets a vote and human beings would come first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you also think that, that, that like, uh, let's take the Uber example because everybody knows it. Uh, when you look at uh, where it's going to in the future, um, do you also think that there maybe will be in one or five years an Uber cooperative, uh, but, but uh, a, 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 a cooperative where all the, where some taxi drivers are a member and that they're really, everybody benefits from, from the profit? I think either Uber has to move to a cooperative model, which I don't think they will, they or yeah, I mean, if something is superior for drivers and there's sufficient demand, there's no reason why they wouldn't move to that. Did you also uh, had uh, interviews with people uh, who had experience with, uh, with doing that, with building up the cooperative no, model? No, that's sort of been um, emerging in my own just like consciousness and um, thoughts. So. Um, I've been participating um, from afar kind of in the Cooperative Academy through the Sustainable Economies and Law Center um, and learning just more deeply about all of the ways that cooperatives work and can work because I think, I mean, digitally at least, there, there's not a lot of examples of mm -hmm. cooperatives that have been scalable yet. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's also a chance. And then also keeping <coughs> the, 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 the cooperative uh, mindset uh, while growing. I think that, that, that's the, 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 the biggest challenge. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to a cooperative. It's it's not it's it's a, it's a, it's a big shift. It's not <laughs> it's not simple. And there aren't you know there aren't very many financial instruments to invest in these things, which is also going to be a challenge. You know, yeah. I see that as a huge challenge for cooperatives. Is like who's going to invest and how and what kind of returns are they going to yeah. be expecting? Yeah, there are models. There's, there's like in Netherlands, there, there's a pension fund. It's mm -hmm. uh, they are starting uh, next year. Mm -hmm. And what they say, okay, well we uh, we've got the pension funds. Mm -hmm. We've got the cooperative. Mm -hmm. We got uh, the, the 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 company uh, uh, where all the, the, the shares are of, of the investors, mm -hmm. and in the end, uh, they both own the, uh, the, the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, starting with zero, one hundred percent, and in mm -hmm. the end, uh, their goal is to have in a couple of years 
that all the all the shares are sold to all the uh, uh, members, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, the investors are out of the company. So they make a profit, uh, a, a, a good profit uh, 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 of the uh, success of the company. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, their goal is to get all the shares to the cooperative. So that's that's a, that's a nice combination when you also yeah. What's that called? <laughs> It's called uh, uh, Bright NL. It's it's Dutch, but I can yeah. uh, send you a picture of their model. It's really interesting. Great! I would love to see that. Yeah. And also looking from from the user uh, perspective, so because you also have had, had lots of experience yourself, but also lots of interviews with users of the of the sharing economy. Mm -hmm. And 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 also in your book uh, or or, in, or 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 on your website, you said okay, uh, we're also uh, uh, sharing some tips uh, for people who want to join the sharing economy. Mm -hmm. What are your top? Five, ten, three, Top what you five want. Ten tips. tips. Wow. It's a big question. Um, it depends on where the person is, you know, like if they're in a small town, mm. then my suggestion is to start off with like something small like a clothing swap or, you know, even start one with your friends. Um, um, start a group that, you know, wants to share stuff. Free Cycle is also um, a company that has, um, you know, lots mm. of access in smaller towns and locations. Um, what are some other ways? Even just offering your car or your, your home while you're away on social media to, to your friends to say, hey, you know, I have this extra thing. Like, you can use it while I'm gone. You know, charge for it or don't. That's up to you. No. I think is a really great way to do it. I mean, obviously, there's really awesome platforms to do these things like Airbnb and Relay Rides and Get Around and things like that. Um, but I think that there are some sort of like out of the box ways to think about it mm -hmm. too. And I also think like, like uh, tomorrow we're going to interview Listia. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the reason why I'm interviewing them is because they <coughs> have their own currency, the, the Listia mm -hmm. credits. That's why we're doing uh, talks about yeah, these things. Yeah. yeah. Do you also think, uh, uh, looking uh, forward to the, uh, of the events of, 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 of this Thursday, do you also think that that would be a another model for, for, for the uh, sharing economy? So yes. that's really. Uh, because they also really going to define as a different kind of value. And then it's not only about uh, the, 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 the money value. Sure. I mean, they're basically taking value and turning it into like their own currency and redistributing it, which is really interesting, I think. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea of just having an international platform where I can lend you my car and, you know, I can go stay in his place, yeah. <laughs> you know, like at different times. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would like to see that like utilized for both products and services within the same platform yeah. and have it be international. I think that that's a really interesting idea because then you're talking not about necessarily currency. You're just talking about getting your needs met, mm -hmm. which is ultimately what we're all trying to do, right? Yeah. We're just trying to get our needs met. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, also when you look at back uh, why, why there's money, it's just uh, the practical right. thing to get stuff done. Right. And, and, and <laughs> it's really changed. not that complicated. <laughs> We've way overcomplicated okay. it. Cool. And uh, your book, uh, when, it, when, uh, when it will it be published? It's published now. So okay. it's available on Amazon. Um, the, the digital version will be available within the next week or so. Yep. And we're having a launch party on January 7th. Cool. So really excited about okay. that. Yeah. Good luck. Looking forward. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for talking to you. Yeah. Thank you.